All right, so welcome to a little bit different episode of Will's Builds. Um, today we're looking at some EJ22 heads. We have EJ22E, which is the non-turbo version. That's this head over here. We have an EJ22T head, which is the turbo version. Now, these heads are extremely similar. Uh, as you can see, they pretty much use the same valve cover. Uh, this is actually the valve cover off of a turbo head. I just have it sitting on here so you can see that it fits. These are both the turbo valve covers. For the most part, the valve covers are the same. The non-turbo one usually comes with one less port on each side for the PCV. The cam gears are the same. Like I said, the valve covers mount the same and fit the same. Uh, when you take the valve covers off, they look almost identical underneath. The rockers are very similar in design. They're they're shaped a little bit different. Uh, the caps are shaped a little bit different. Well, uh, I'm, I'd venture a guess that these are interchangeable as well, but we will see here in a minute exactly how interchangeable they are. And, but before I go start tearing these things down to a bare head, let's look at some of the differences on the outside. So for starters on the outside of this head, you can clearly see the biggest difference here is the exhaust outlets. The turbo head uses a more traditional Subaru head style of exhaust outlet. It has basically one port for each cylinder, whereas the non-turbo one only has a single outlet. Now, this is actually only on, I believe, the 95 and up EJ22E. So phase one, EJ22, these are all phase one, up until about around 99, 98, 99, they started doing, switching over to phase two stuff. So you got some Frankenstein cars in there, but for the most part, you'll see on second gen Subaru Legacies and first gen Subaru Imprezas, you will see the single port outlet. Now, as I said, the first gen Subaru Legacy, so like off this, the same that this car came out of, but the non-turbo, they had two ports. And you can actually see by the shape of this head that it's the same casting as the turbo head. If we wipe this off a little bit, oops. I'm hoping you guys can kind of see this on the camera, but it actually has kind of the rounded sides like this one does around there and around there. And then this part in the middle Right here on the bottom is where we actually have our third bolt on the two port head. This mounting stud is actually exactly the same here on both heads. We have a drain port right here for, I'm going to assume oil, so you can get all the oil out of them. My, this is kind of leaking on my counter, but that's what a workbench is for. You drain all the oil out of it before you take it all apart, it makes less of a mess. And this is where this other stud is right here. Now, this is one difference that we can kind of see on the outside here. This is obviously has a boss cast into the head where they drilled in and tapped it for the stud. This one doesn't have that. It's just open behind there. It's just got the this top part here, which also looks exactly the same with this little round part on here and a flat part but there's just nothing behind it to mount anything to. Now coming around to the back of the head is where we start seeing some of the turbo specific stuff on this head here. A lot of the stuff is actually still on this head. If you look right here, it actually has a flat part right here that could probably be drilled out and put this tube in there. So as you see on the back of here, this has a cap right here with two bolts. This is only on the driver side head of this engine. The passenger side just has a seal. That's There's no cap or anything like that. And on this head, this is where the turbo gets its oil supply and water supply from. That's why this has got, this one's all kind of rusted and stuff because that's where the water goes. This is oil pressure. This is the oil drain back. And then the water goes back to the reservoir for, straight from the turbo. That's, that's kind of like that on even like Kayla's newer Subaru, the water 
return straight back to the reservoir, not back into the head or any part of the system there. Now that we got these caps off, you can see that they're kind of a seal for the back of the cam, but as I said on this one, it supplies oil, which is from this hole right here and water from this hole right here. Now, the non-turbo head doesn't actually have the ports where the fluids actually come out of. So like I said, oil's up here, it's that little one. And then coolants, this one is kind of the rusty one. But these covers, as you can see, are in fact interchangeable. And that one could go on there and this one could go on here. But, um, yeah, so these are interchangeable. Um, this is just showing how similar these these two heads are. That, like I said, they're pretty much they're almost the same casting. It's it's kind of crazy. I would be curious to see if we could make this drain pipe fit in the non-turbo head, and I might do that in another video. Maybe mod that head to see if we could set it up for turbo. Uh, I don't know. Um, if you guys want to see me mess with that head that they've been sitting, they have 240,000 miles on them. If you'd like to see me do something weird with those heads, uh, let me know. Put a comment down below or comment on Instagram or something and um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do that in a future video. Now here's where we kind of start seeing our first major differences in casting. Now this, we still have the non-turbo head on the left over here, turbo head on the right. And for the most part, you know, you can see some similarities. Like this is where oil is going to drain back to the oil pan. Uh, you have oil pressure up here. That's where the oil is going to be fed to the head. But all the rest of these ports are coolant. Now these big holes here are obviously not for coolant. Those are where the head bolts come through. But all of these in here are indeed for coolant. Now the block that this came off of is what's called an open deck block. And I will, I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. But for the most part on these early ones, you have the two cylinders and they're supported at the end here by some metal. They're supported in the middle and then at the other end. Uh, on later ones, they call them semi-closed deck, but they weren't much better. They ha also had a little piece of metal on the top and bottom that was supporting them. This head coming off the turbo engine was closed deck. Now, the only part of the deck on that engine block that is open basically lines up with, with these water ports here. So you don't get as much water flow probably but it supports the head gasket a lot better and you'll you'll be less likely to to blow a head gasket now the difference on the bottom here they're they're damn near identical and same well actually these actually this one actually has a little bit bigger hole right here and probably same about similar up there and there but once we come across the top here, you'll see that there's a, a long one in the middle and then two smaller ones on the end, whereas this one just has two long ones. And, you know, that matches up with the head uh, almost perfectly. I might be a little worried if I put this head on a closed deck block. Now, I don't know why you'd do that because, you know, that is, like I said, that's the turbo engine and can't exactly use this head on the turbo engine without redoing your oil and coolant lines for your turbo and stuff, but just know that if for some reason you need to replace your turbo heads and all you can find are non-turbo heads, that uh, you, you might have a cooling issue. Uh, I don't even think this would line up with the head gasket. Um, actually, that might have been my issue with this. I know I bought some cheap head gaskets for it and I basically had to make new holes. Uh, as you can see, there's kind of an oval there. So I, I probably had the wrong head gasket to be honest, but uh, I was in kind of in a pinch and needed the car rebuilt as fast as I could. So uh, I, I had to I had to use what I had. All right, so I got the rockers all loose, and as you can see, the turbo ones are quite a bit longer, probably a good I don't know half an inch or so longer, and that's because these caps are just thicker. I don't know if that was on purpose by design because it was a turbo head or if that's just what they did they they figured out later they could they could cut some material off make it lighter uh, I'm not I'm not exactly sure I don't have weights for this but I guess I could weigh the the two setups I don't I don't if you're if you're uh, looking for weight weight reduction that hard um, I think you're looking in the wrong place all right so what we have here is the rockers. Now the 
the single one, the big one in the middle, is going to be for your exhaust. So that's the side, they're closer together, you can see. And these ones that are kind of by themselves, they're a little bit farther apart, are the intake. Now on the turbo head here, this just has kind of a smooth, uh, what's that, convex little slide that it rides on the cam with. And you can, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on the video, but I mean, there's wear marks in it. Uh, that one actually kind of has like a little, I can actually like feel a little bump on there. But on the non-turbo heads, it actually has a roller on, on all of the rockers, intake, exhaust, everything. Uh, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know when they changed this. Uh, I don't even know if that's something I could look up, to be honest. Uh, I didn't, I never knew that until I just pulled this apart. But that could be where one of the differences in the cams comes from because they have different style rockers, so they have different lift on the cams. Now in 1997 on both the single and dual overhead cam cars, they went to a uh, an actual mechanical lifter, one that you actually have to adjust with, sometimes you have to adjust them by uh, loosening a nut and tightening the the lash adjuster down or by actually putting shims uh, under under the the cup that goes over the valve spring now like I said these are hydraulic lash adjusters so they always are at zero lash but you do lose a little bit of lift with these uh, and that'd be another thing that I might try and um, look up is finding non hydraulic lash adjusters and seeing if we can get them to work on these heads and what sort of difference it would make. So actually, I actually haven't been able to get these cams out yet. You have to take the cam gears off first and then the cam slides out the back of the head on the driver's side. On the passenger side, it comes out the front so it doesn't matter if the cam gears on or off. But anyways, some differences that I wanted to point out in the cams. Uh, when I do get these off, I will be measuring them and against each other and this other cam that I have. And one of the big differences that I, I'm noticing physically on these cams that's not size is these little oil ports right here on all the lobes of the turbo cam. And it's not on the NA cam from the newer engine. Now, I don't think this has to do with it being turbo because right here I actually have a first gen Subaru Legacy non turbo cam out of, like I said, a 89 to 94 EJ22. And it has the oil parts. I, I was under the impression that these were not turbo cams. So that's, that's what I was told. That's what I'm going with. So I think it has to do with the rockers because as we saw, the newer head has roller rockers, whereas these just have a flat or a convex surface rather that just rides metal on metal. And so it ejects oil out of here to give it a layer of oil to slide on instead of direct metal on metal. I am curious when I put these heads back together, I'm gonna try and find the, out of these three cams that I have. So we have, like I said, 92 turbo, uh, 92 ish non turbo, and 96 non turbo. So I'm gonna use that. The biggest cam of those three and I'm going to use hopefully use whatever the biggest valves are that I have so I'm gonna pull these valves out here uh, probably one intake one exhaust from each and see which one's the biggest all right so we got the one set of valve springs out from each head the darker the browner ones here you know as you saw higher mileage non turbo head and then we got kind of the more normal colored ones out of the turbo head and you should be able to see this but uh, here we have exhaust, and it, exhaust is these two, intake is these two. The, for the most part, I would say the spring retainers are functionally identical. The only difference is on the top, should I say these ones are smooth all the way around, whereas these ones are, they have like a little lip in them. Yeah, there you go. You can see like the little lip, but otherwise they both should hold the, the spring retainers themselves look identical as well, or the, the valve stem retainers 
themselves look identical as well. The only thing that's different is height on these and the slightly different design on the retainers. Now it might be kind of hard to tell in the video here. Uh, I'm not sure um, how well it'll show up on the camera, but the turbo ones are just a little taller. So here we also have the valves. Um, this is the non-turbo exhaust valve. I'll put that one there. Or excuse me, other way around. Turbo exhaust valve, non-turbo. And then same thing here. This is the non-turbo. This is the turbo. Valve springs are the same length. I'll put these back together swapped and see if there's any like free play in the spring with the shorter spring. Maybe the where the the spring sits on the head is thicker on that head. That's why it's a little bit short spring. Not sure, probably doesn't matter, but I will try it out and see. So uh, yeah, if you guys have any other questions about these two heads, I have them all torn down. So feel free to leave a comment or shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram. So I'm gonna also work on getting these cams out and I'll probably throw that together in a separate video, just a real quick one showing the differences of the three different cams. But until then, thanks for watching. Just keep building.